Ciao and a very happy new year to you all. Stay tuned for my top 10 comic based Marvel Legends of 2017. Let's go. Pow and welcome back to the channel Dan Who Reviews. My name is Dan W. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. Now as I just said, this is my top 10 comic based Marvel Legends of 2017. Now it's that time of year again when we get to look back at what a great year Hasbro had with Marvel Legends. Nearly 100 figures got released. So creating a list of 10 was very difficult. So what I'm going to do on this channel is make free lists, top 10 comic based figures, top 10 Marvel film slash Netflix, so MCU inspired figures, and then a top five builder figure list. So I'm gonna create three lists for the channel, starting today with my top 10 comic based Marvel Legends figures. Now the rules are simple. I create the rules and I have to own the figure. It's essentially it. I can basically do what I want with this list as long as I own the figure. So figures like that Dark Phoenix 2 pack, which was a Toys R Us exclusive, I didn't get my greasy mutts on as the Toys R Us in the UK is terrible. So even though she looked great, she's not gonna be in my list because I don't own her. But all the other figures, I virtually have everything out. So all the other figures I got to pick from and I've created a list. I might have cheated in a few sections, but nevertheless, it's my channel, my rules. So yeah, without further ado people, here is my top 10 Marvel Legend comic based figures of 2017. Let's go. Pow, so let's get to it. My top 10 comic based Marvel Legends of 2017. Now, once again, let me reiterate that this list was really hard because I like all of the figures that I buy, otherwise I wouldn't buy them. So it's very hard to narrow it down to a top 10. So I'm gonna probably cheat a lot on this list even though I have set myself some rules um, and my list would probably be different tomorrow. But in front of me, you see some honorable mentions. So none of these have actually made the top 10 ranking, but these are just figures that I've enjoyed throughout the year. Um, massive fan of Spider-Man, of course. Loved the animated show growing up, so Mary Jane and Peter Parker were the perfect combination. So I was really happy to get this two pack throughout the year and then just a civilian based Mary Jane was great. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a Gwen Stacy in 2018. And I really like that. We finally got an adult version of the unmasked Peter Parker head. Um, we got Shatterstar here. Now, I didn't really know anything about the character, but when I did a little bit of research for my figure review, so make sure you check out my figure review of all of these on the channel. Um, this was a super comic accurate version of the character. Like, it's just perfect. If you were a fan of Shatterstar, then I don't know how they could have made this figure better. Maybe a different book, but... Nevertheless, it's just a great figure if you're a fan of that character. Now, for me, I'm not a massive fan of the character, so it didn't make a top 10 ranking, but I still respect that it's a great figure and it's very accurate. Again, Dark Hawk, didn't know nothing about the character. I did some research from a review, really liked his backstory, but again, wasn't on my radar beforehand, so I didn't make my top 10, but again, a great representation of the comic book character in figure form. And then lastly, right at the back, you see Perales. Perales, I always get her, her name wrong. But after, <laughs> I don't know if it's me because I've been watching the Gifted X-Men TV show recently that she has come to the forefront, but I've really enjoyed posing this figure um, recently as well. This has been on my shelf since the X-Men wave of this year, uh, last year even now, because, wow, well, it's 2018 already. But still, she was, I don't know why, again, she's not an amazing figure. Again, there's nothing magic about it. There's no double jointed elbows, all of that goodness when it comes to female figures, but just the fun factor of posing that figure on the shelf and, again, learning a little bit more about the character being Magneto's long lost daughter and all of that goodness. And obviously the TV show Gifted brought her to the forefront again. So yeah, Prylez, really like her. Um, but yeah, shout out to my honourable mentions. So let's get into it. Let's get into the top 10. Pow, now I know I'm cheating, but number 10 is collectively some of the figures from the Sandman Builder figure wave. Now, this was the first official wave of 2017, but a lot of people included it in their best of 2016, as it did start to hit retail at the end of December. Now, I kept it off my list and tried to stay official to Hasbro, but some of these figures probably would have made my top uh, comic book list of that year. 
Um, now, as I couldn't show them any love then, I'm showing them some love now, as there's some great representations of some of my favourite Spider-Man villains, including the Shocker, obviously Green Goblin, really like the Jackal, now I know his backstory and I've read the Clone Saga and stuff like that recently. Uh, black suit of Spider-Man, iconic, classic, and then obviously brand new Camilla Khan as well, Miss Marvel. So it's a great selective round group of figures from that Sandman builder figure wave. And it was because I didn't get to go and show them any love last year, I'm showing them some love now. Collectively, number 10. Number nine goes to the Asgardian, that is Angela. Now, her backstory is a little bit complicated of how she actually ended up at Marvel, but nevertheless, she's moved into canon, and I think she's now like a long-lost sister of Thor. So, they even used some of that aspect into Halle's character in the Thor Ragnarok film. So, yeah, interesting backstory, and a figure that a lot of people wanted for that Asgardian shaft. Now, I'm not all hyped on the Asgardian figures and again it wasn't a character I knew much about so that's why she's not higher on my list but I do really respect Hasbro's attempt at this figure because it's really good let's be honest female figures ain't that great they don't get shown a lot of love and even though this doesn't have a waist joint or double jointed elbows it still looks great on the shaft it pops the hair is like windswept she comes with a couple of weapons obviously I don't know what these are called but they look good she comes with two of them and she also comes with a sword that is holstered and it's just a really good uh, a, a figure. Um, like Again, not my favourite character, so probably didn't end up higher on the list. And again, some issues with articulation um, because she should be battling people, so she should be able to articulate well. But if you're just going to have her statically standing on your Asgardian shelf, then she looks great. So yeah, number nine, Angela. Number eight goes to Tombstone from the Vulture Builder figure wave from earlier this year. And probably a controversial choice for some people, but for me it's probably the nostalgic factor of those Spider-Man rogues gallery from the animated series in the 90s. That's my first sort of window into the Marvel. Before the comics I was watching Spider-Man and X-Men on Saturday mornings and whatnot. Before I went back and found out where they all come from. And the Spider-Man Rose Gallery is one of my favourite. Probably the only one beating it is probably Batman, as a lot of people say. But yeah, Tombstone's a great figure. I really like having my figures on the shelf fighting these big, bulky bad guys. It just makes them look a lot more menacing, I suppose. Fake, great face sculpt. Uh, I like his outfit. Very comic accurate. Probably would have preferred him with the suited body. Have a have a having a suited henchman that's a bit more bulkier. Uh, would have been good for those ACBM and whatnot. But nevertheless, this guy probably would have been better with maybe a couple of interchangeable heads with different expressions or different hands or whatnot. Uh, but nevertheless, a great figure and it made my number eight. The number seven spot goes to Sunfire. Now, I really like when I get a figure that makes me go back and explore the character just because I liked the figure. And this is definitely an example of that. I went back and read the whole Big Hero 6 sort of story, found out who this guy is, what his power set is, what he does, where he belongs in the Marvel Universe. And I really enjoyed the whole process. And it is a really good figure on probably one of the best books Marvel Legends have done so far. The Spider-Man 2099 body is so well articulated. This guy is just so fun to pose around. Now, Talking about Spider-Man 2099, as I showed that Sandman build a figure wave some love earlier, I'm going to throw him in at number seven as well because they both are in the same book. It's essentially the same figure, different repaints, few accessories and whatnot. Now, all of these fire characters are so much fun to pose with when you've got some fire effects, whether it be Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, Ghost Rider, the Dark, uh, Dark Phoenix, any of those, if you get some fire effects and it makes these uh, flamed sort of characters pop on the shelf. But even this Spider-Man 2099, I really enjoyed learning about the backstory. And if you've got any of those um, uh, Iron Man sort of effects, you can get these guys into some really good posing uh, options on the shelf, especially if you've got... Um, um, what are they called? Flight stands. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, these figures, this book is probably the best Marvel Legends book so far. And uh, yeah, joint number seven is uh, Sunfire and Spider-Man 2099. So number six goes to Luke Cage from the Defenders box set, which I believe was an Amazon exclusive. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking this isn't even a good Luke Cage figure. Well, this is my top 10. And for some reason, I always wanted a Luke Cage. I don't know why I've always gravitated towards this character from the comic books. Really liked the first half of his TV show as well. And I just really liked the Luke Cage character. So I wanted one of these figures. 
But on the aftermarket, that Thunderbolts box set from San Diego Comic-Con a while ago was just impossible to get hold of. And I really wanted the Luke Cage and the Ghost figure from that box set. Never managed to get them. So I was so happy when Hasbro finally revealed that we're going to get a Luke Cage in the Defenders box set. Now that whole box set was great if you're just a comic fan that wanted to complete a whole set in uh, one go. So you can check out my review on my channel for the Defenders box set. But yeah, Luke Cage mainly because I really wanted this character in my collection, has made the number six spot on my top 10. Pow, so as we get into the top five here, an interesting choice, I'm sure you'll agree, is Alsa Bloodstone from the A-Force box set. Now, it was great to get a whole set of female figures to fill out the ranks in our Marvel Legends collection. So I could have picked any one of those figures from the box, but for some reason, Alsa Bloodstone just jumped out to me. I really like the character design, her big red long ponytail. I love that she comes with some crazy weapons. I love that her backstory is that she's like a monster hunter. I went and did some research on that. Check out my review for her as I do give you a brief background on her as a character. And yeah, I don't know why, but this is the one figure that I've kept out of the box and just been posing around on the shelf constantly. Uh, I just really, really like this figure. Again, probably not everyone's favorite choice. Yes, it would have been great for female figures to have double jointed elbows, more articulation, I get that. But I just like the figure regardless. I like the face sculpt, I like the character design. And yeah, this is my top 10 people. So yeah, Alsa Bloodstone representing the A-Force box set hits the number five list on my list. Pow, at number four is the tank himself that is Colossus. Now, as I said, I'm very nostalgic for those classic X-Men characters and I really, really was happy to get a Colossus figure for my collection. And I really like the bearded head. I know that's not his classic look that we're used to seeing, but I really liked it. I think he looks badass. Again, not my favorite cos uh, costume for Colossus, but he still looks great. And obviously in the future, there may be, they may use this mold to give us another Colossus figure with the more style costume that people want. Um, again, would have been better with maybe a couple of interchangeable hands, but I love that they gave us interchangeable head. Uh, this figure is a beast. He could have been a builder figure. A lot of people speculated he was originally. Um, but yeah, he's an absolute beast. If I pull in Alsa Bloodstone, you can see towers above a standard six inch Marvel Legends figure. And yeah, just one of my favorites. I've really enjoyed posing him around on the shelf, smashing through buildings and my dioramas and whatnot. And yeah, Colossus has made my top four. Coming in at number three is the Back in Black Deadpool. Now, I believe it was a GameStop exclusive over in the US, but I managed to get my hands on it and really, really enjoyed this figure just for the playability factor on its own. I love when figures come with tons of accessories, which this guy did. Two swords, interchangeable hands, two interchangeable heads so you can make him more venomized, carnage dies, whatever the story is. It's just basically Deadpool in the Spider-Man symbiote suit. And it's just a really fun figure to pose around. He's basically got six arms, because those tentacles coming out the back, which are really fun. So you can have him posed on a diorama, fighting a ton of bad guys with swords and guns all over the place. Comes with interchangeable hands. Yes, there was one loose peg, but it's an easy fix. I really like the character design. It's Deadpool, but it's black and white. It's smart, it's simple, it's clean. Uh, I love the Psylocke-inspired swords. Just a really fun figure. Um, a lot of people probably underrate this figure because it was maybe a little bit difficult to get hold of. I'm not too sure over in the US, but I really liked it. And uh, yeah, made my top three. Back in black, Deadpool. Coming in at number two is the X-Men Wave Warlock Builder figure, Cyclops, in his classic Jim Lee 90s style X-Men costume. Now, as I've already mentioned, uh, X-Men, the cartoon, was my first sort of introduction to the X-Men before I went back and read the comics. And this is my Cyclops. This is how I picture Cyclops if someone says that name to me. Uh, and this is perfect for just the character design alone. Yes, it would have been better with maybe an unmasked head where he hasn't got the visors on. And look, let's be honest, these things are annoying as hell. If these were glued on and wasn't in the way of articulation, then this may have hit the number one spot just on nostalgic factor alone. But because they're a bit of a pain in the ass and the lack of accessories, unfortunately, he hit the number two spot. But it was a figure that I really, really wanted on my X-Men shelf. I really want to fill out those X-Men 90s ranks. Um, I got the Beast recently. Obviously, next year, we're getting the more classic Tiger-Swiped Wolverine. 
And yeah, I can't wait to get Gambit. We're getting Psylocke soon. So yeah, that X-Men shelf is going to look really, really good. And it wouldn't have been complete without a Cyclops. The head sculpt is great. Uh, again, you can put the unmasked Matt Murdock head on there if you wanted to and make a more casual uh, Cyclops if you use that Old Man Logan jacket that I've seen Pucker Mike make a custom of. And yeah, just, just again, just on nostalgic factor, again, I understand it's probably not the most complicated uh, figure. It's just on the bookie cap, but just on nostalgic factor alone and my love for the X-Men characters, Cyclops is made number two. So coming in at number one, drum roll please. My favorite comic based Marvel Legend of 2017 was X, no, it's, it's Bullseye. Sorry X Nilo, but no, it's definitely Bullseye. Uh, this is a great, great figure. As I've already mentioned in this video, that the Spider-Man 2099 body is probably the best Marvel Legends body we have. And um, this Bullseye is perfect character for that body as he is a master assassin and he never misses his target. And uh, Hasbro gave us some great accessories of this figure as well. Very comic accurate. He comes with two interchangeable heads, this screaming face with that crazy expression with the bullseye sort of, I think it's a, a scar. I think it's a scar. Uh, he also comes with the masked bullseye head with that crazy little cheeky grin expression. Mine's got a little bit of a paint defect, but that's not a big issue to me. Um, Hadro even attempted to give us this effect, throwing knives or whatever they're called. Again, probably not the best effect, but we have to applaud Hasbro for even attempting stuff like this. So we got a couple of interchangeable hands, couple of interchangeable heads. I really like this pointing hand. He comes with weapons. He comes with a a gun which is holstered that you can take out, not the best gun, but he has one. He comes with a knife in the back there as well. At the minute he's holding one of the Punisher's guns, so obviously you can use other weapons. You can easily make uh, a pack of cards for him in 112 scale if you wanted to. I might even do that for a display soon. Um, but yeah, really, really like this bullseye figure. The expression on this head is great. The articulation is perfect. It's a clean paint job and it really is a solid comic representation of the figure. I don't know what they could have done better apart from maybe more accessories, more hands and whatnot. But in regards to just the figure and the articulation, it's a great figure to get fighting your uh, daredevil on the shelf. Um, so let's hope that next year Hasbro give us a kingpin. If we get a kingpin figure so we can pose with um, our sort of street villains, that would be perfect. But yeah, the number one figure in comic form for Marvel Legends 2017, in my humble opinion, and I'm sure many of us, is this. Let me move the light in before he fades away because probably why it wasn't the best background for this figure. But yeah, it's Bullseye. So Thank you very much for watching people. I'm gonna shut up now because I'm sure this video is about three hours long. If you are still watching, it is much appreciated. I hope you enjoyed my list and my ramblings of Marvel Legends. It was a great year. We must applaud Hasbro for all of the figures. Nearly a hundred figures, not quite a hundred, but nearly a hundred individual figures released from Hasbro. So thank God we ain't getting our Marvel figures made by Mattel. Sorry Mattel, but it's true. Um, yeah, can't wait to see what 2018 brings us with Infinity War and the Black Panther film. Obviously, we've got the Ant-Man and the Wasp film, but I'm sure Hasbro will give us plenty of good waves. We're getting another X-Men wave, Infinity War waves, Deadpool wave. Oh, it's going to be so good. So let me know what your lists are in the comments. If you agreed with mine, if you disagreed with mine, I want to start a conversation below. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at It's Dan Who. And obviously stay tuned for the other lists on the channel. So subscribe, check out that videos tab, see what else is here. But thank you very much for bearing with me and I shall see you on the next one.